And the last issue I, I just want to point out is, number four, is that you know, there's no commitment or covenant in that relationship. So you, so you open these doors up to this appropriate, inappropriate touching and this practicing of marriage and having this marriage-like relationship. But there's, there's no commitment or covenant. And you know, that's not to say that, that it's wrong for two single people to commit to one another and promise each other and say, hey, you know, we are going to get married, which is what people in this church are going to do, which is good. So there's nothing wrong with reserving yourself for one person. But what I do want to say is, you know, but it shouldn't change how you behave. You should uh, just still be close friends. You shouldn't be intimate. So even though you have promised one another, hey, you know, we're going to get married, you know, that shouldn't change how you behave to one another because you're still single people in the eyes of God. You are not yet married. I personally don't think, you know, it's wise to commit to a person. And I'll, 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 let me say this first. Like, it's, it's different when you're engaged, right? Because you guys are engaged. I think it's different. Because when you're engaged, you're not boyfriend and girlfriend anymore. You're actually, you're engaged, right? You're fiancé. So you, you've made that promise. You are going to get married. You're just figuring out the date and all that sort of stuff. But I'm talking about people that are, are just boyfriend and girlfriend. They're not engaged yet. They haven't made a promise to marry each other. <clears throat> I personally don't think it's wise to commit to one person if they're not ready and willing to marry you. I mean, is that wise to, to, to reserve yourself for a man who's not even willing to commit to you and, and vice versa? Why, why would a guy want to you know, commit to one lady when sh she's not willing or ready to commit to him? I would say things are a little different because obviously usually the guy goes after the girl. So when the guy's going after a girl, you know, he's focused, he's trying to win this one girl. So I would say it applies more to females because from a female's point of view, is it wise for a female to reserve herself for this one suitor when he's not even really ready to marry? He's just trying to start something with you. He's not ready to get married. He's not willing to commit to you only. Uh, and yet you're willing to reserve yourself and maybe cut off other opportunities that you might have with other people. Um, I don't, I don't think that's wise. <clears throat> and, and if you do, let's say you do commit to this person, this man that is not ready to marry or not willing to commit to you, what incentive is there for him to marry you? You know what I mean? Because you've already given him that commitment and he hasn't had to marry you. So what commitment, what, what uh, like incentive is there to make that commitment in order for you to commit to him in marriage? And, and there's a famous saying, you know, why, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? And this is why as, as a lady, you shouldn't give the guy anything. You know, no holding hands, no hugging, no sitting close, no kissing. Because why give the man milk when he hasn't bought the cow yet? You know, what incentive is there to buy the cow when he's getting milk? Because that's what he's after, right? That's what guys are after. And it's natural and normal. And, you know, guys are going to push that boundary. So... You know, yes, I'm not excusing the guys because obviously a guy should not be doing that. But from the, from the female's point of view, don't give him anything. You know, because why, what, what incentive is there for him to hurry things up if you're giving him what he's after? You know, I heard, I heard one, one person say to me once in Phoenix, and this was an unsaved person, just like, you know, a guy didn't, didn't know anything about the Bible. And we were talking about dating and things like that. And he was saying, oh, you know, why... Uh, you know, how can you get married so quickly and all that sort of stuff. And he, and he basically said, you know, because, you, you know, you want to date people and you want to, you know, date a couple of people because you want to try before you buy. And I just think that is the most ungodly and wicked thing to do because, you know, a, a, a woman is a soul. You know what? She's not like a, she's not just a car that you go and drive and then try out for a year or two and then just, just uh, you know, dispose of her. You know, so this, this is an ungodly attitude where people say, you know, I'm just dating people because I just want to try before I buy. I just want to like, see, see what's, uh, what's useful for me. No, because people, you know, and ladies especially, are not your toy to play with. They're not you know, uh, just, a, just, a, just a product that you try and then return if you don't like it. Um, it's a soul that you're after and, and we need to uh, uphold their purity and, and as the Bible says, you know, treat them as sisters with all purity. But, you know, even Christians sometimes go into dating with this mentality of, uh, I want to trial it, you know, and not trial it intimately, just like tr trial it meaning like, you know, I just want to see whether we get along and all that sort of stuff. And, um, and, and basically this tr try before you buy mentality, which in a sense is right, because, you, you know, you need to find out about that person to decide whether or not you want to commit to them. 
But this doesn't take years and years and years and years. And to me, this never made sense when people would date for two years, three years, and they just take time just for the sake of taking time, just to see how it is, as though those couple of years somehow will dictate the rest of your life. And those of us who are married, we know that that's not the case because marriages don't just ha good marriages don't just happen. You know, like a good marriage doesn't just happen. It, you know, it takes work. It, you know, it takes commitment. It takes knowing what God says about the different roles of husband and wife and making it work and going through the tribulations and trials of marriage and overcoming them and building that relationship, getting to know one another and loving each other more and more and more so that your marriage is getting better. That, that's what, what builds a good marriage. It's not just, hey, you know, we, we just try it out for three years and hey, it seems to be good and now we can just let it coast, you know, for the next... 30 years or 50 years or however until we die it doesn't work that way and that's why i think it's silly for people to just trial being together for so many years because that three years is not going to mean it's not going to change what the next 50 years are going to be like you know and you're trialing this person as though oh you to see what sort of person they are but even after you get married what if they change so it's not about you know just seeing what it's going to be like for these couple of years and then just letting it coast it's about having the right mindset of how to have a good marriage. You can go back and listen to those sermons of how to have a good marriage because mar a good marriage takes work. It doesn't just happen automatically. So a good past doesn't equal a good future. And, you know, delaying marriage just, increased to, just leads to increased chances of fornication. The longer you delay that marriage date, the longer the, the, the increased opportunity there is to fall into sin. And, you know, another blessing that gets robbed from you is, is all those exciting moments at the beginning of a, of, of a relationship are not done in marriage. Remember how I talked about, you know, once you get married, that, that guilt is gone. So you can enjoy the, you know, going on this trip and going on that trip and having dinner together and spending time together, watching the sunset, all these things that usually dating couples do. Now, now you've had to do all these things with that guilt over your head saying like, you know, we should be married and I know this is not right and I'm not, you know, because you know what the Bible says and you know what you're doing is questionable. But if you got married sooner, the three years that you were dating, you would have spent married. You would have been married for three years and all of those great experiences that you had at the beginning where they were excited would have been done without that guilty conscience. And yeah, it would have just been a, more of a blessing to you.